Hi, in this part of the Blender Beginner course, I'll introduce Compositor in Blender. And don't forget to watch the earlier parts. If you are interested in learning the latest 3D techniques, particularly in Blender, be sure to subscribe to the channel. Before we begin, let me introduce our Asset Distro website, where you can explore a variety of free and premium assets. We offer high-quality game-ready assets and also Blender projects, all of which you are free to use in any of your projects. So be sure to check out our store at store.blackave.com. Compositor improves the final render by adding effects, similar to editing an image in Photoshop, but in a different way. Now we want to add effects to this scene. To do this, we need to go to the compositing section, or we can open the section in the bottom window, as I explained in the previous part. Go to the compositing section. These two nodes represent the final render. The first one is the final render, and the second node displays it. If you can't see these nodes, make sure the Use Nodes option is activated. Once you enable it, it will stay visible. To see the effects and changes you add, you need to render your scene and apply the effects to it. Use the Render section as I explained in the previous parts. There is also a button called Backdrop which shows the final render behind the nodes. In Blender 4.2 and later, a feature called Real-Time Composition has been added, which you can activate from this menu. Here you need to choose whether you want to see the effect through the camera or in all views. I select Always. Now I can see any modification in real-time without needing to render the scene. Press Shift A to open the list of effects. I'll explain the important ones. First, let's search for glare. The image output from the render layer will be connected to the image input of the glare node automatically. As you can see, extra brightness has been added to the scene. Let's turn off real-time composition to see the changes. There are some settings here. With iterations, we can adjust the intensity of the effect. By using streaks, we can adjust the number of streaks. Using fade, we can adjust the opacity. The important section is that we can change the glare type, which will adjust the glare shape and settings. Each type represents a specific shape. For example, this simple star looks like streaks. The most useful one is blue, which was added in Blender 4.2 and creates a realistic glare effect. We can control the intensity of the effect using the size field, and we can change the distribution using the threshold field. Adjusting these fields properly will enhance the beauty of the scene. It's looking good, but we can make some additional adjustments. Let's modify the threshold. That's good. Now let's add other effects. By using Ctrl and right click, we can cut a connection. No, we can't see anything because the connection to the composite node has been disconnected. Press Shift A. The second node I want to use is Lens Distortion. There is almost no specific order in adding nodes. This node will change the lens shape, distortion will modify the lens, and dispersion will add a special effect to the lens. As you can see, the corners of the camera are distorted. We can fix this by activating the projector option or the fit option. The projector option has a different behavior, while the fit option preserves the original shape. I'll use fit. For this render, I only want to use dispersion. It will give our render a cinematic look. 
Now let's add a next effect. I want to make some adjustments to the scene color. For this, I need to add a color balance node. This node represents three channels for modifying the scene's color, with each channel responsible for a specific area's color. As you can see, the scene color is changing, but it's just an effect and doesn't actually change the original colors. Alright, let's choose warm colors. We can change the intensity by adjusting the fact value. And now it's better. We can also adjust brightness on a channel by using a value next to that channel. We can add an effect to make the scene more cinematic by adding black margins around the screen. For this, I need to look for the ellipse mask node. This node adds a black area to the result, but leaves a circular shape in the center empty. Press Ctrl Shift and click to view the preview. We can change its position by adjusting the X and Y values. We can change the scale by adjusting the width and height. I think this size is good. We can also rotate it. Next, we need to blur it because the edges between the black and white areas are too sharp. Look for the blur node. This node has several blur types, and the one I want to use is Gaussian. The most useful one is Gaussian, and it works in most cases. We can apply this node to any result, such as a render result. To add blur, you need to adjust the X and Y values based on your needs. If you want a standard blur, the X and Y values should be equal. But if you want a directional blur, you can increase only the X or Y value. Anyway, let's connect it to the ellipse mask node. Press Ctrl Shift and click to view the preview. As you can see, the blur effect on the mask is increasing. To combine it with the final result, I need a node called Mix Color. I need to connect both the render and mask to the inputs of that node. I should connect the blur to the second input. As you can see by modifying the fact which is the controller, uh, the color changes. I need to change the operation of this node, for example, to overlay or multiply. As you can see, the black margin has been added to the final render. We can also use the add operation. I think the scene is a little dark. We can fix it by using another node called brightness and contrast. We need to reduce the contrast a little. A higher contrast value makes the dark areas darker. I 
I don't think we need to change the brightness value. There are also several nodes in a filter section that can add special effects to the scene. For example, anti-aliasing can remove sharp lines and smooth the result. There are some differences between using and not using this node. The next node is Kohawara, which makes the result look like oil paint. I have explained all the necessary nodes to make the scene cinematic in the tutorial here. It's beautiful. This node has some options to adjust, which I explained separately in the Kohawara tutorial that you can watch. In the next tutorial, we will introduce more advanced features. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And feel free to share your questions and ideas in the comments.